All right, hi. Hi. It's Trent. Uh, this, I haven't announced this or anything, but I'm just today gonna run through how to do the run jack modification on the version one Just Friends. Um, I'm gonna try and make a video, make it short and concise. Um, we'll start with an explanation. So, if we go over here. Um, so this here is the schematic of the run jack section um, of Just Friends. This is the jack in question. Um, and you'll see here that the switch of the jack, that's the often called a normal in your rack, is connected to negative 12 volts directly. Um, the reason that I did that in the first place um, is that it's actually explained here in the schematic. When no jack is present, so when there's nothing in, uh, 12 volts will be sent into the input, and negative 12 volts. And negative 12 volts is a signal that is never created in a normal Eurorack system. Um, so my thinking was, back in 2016, I think, when I designed this, um, I could use that voltage to uh, basically know that there was nothing connected to the jack, and then when the voltage was within plus or minus 10 volts, um, I would know that it was a real signal and there was a cable in the jack. Um, we use this to do what are called the run modes in Just Friends, which you probably, if you're watching this video, you already know about. Um, turns out this is a dangerous technique. Um, so the issue is, um, with this here, there is a moment uh, when you plug a cable into the jack where the switch is not fully released um, from the from the actual connection of the tip when you plug in the cable. So the issue happens as you're plugging the cable in. Momentarily, the tip of that cable has negative 12 volts on it directly. And that can feed back to another module which is already attached, usually an output. Um, and it can damage that output by bridging that output to negative 12 volts for just an instant. It only takes a couple milliseconds. Um, and that's actually the issue, is it's uh, it's that momentary instance. So the solution for this board, uh, which is not perfect, but it does work um, and is safe and protects things, um, is that we simply need to add a resistor in, in line here in order to reduce the current. Um, so you still, negative 12 volts is still seen by that output, but if we reduce the current, we limit the current with a resistor, uh, the likelihood of damage is greatly reduced. Um, so let's, th this is the look of the actual the jack on the PCB design. Um, so up the top here is the tip. Um, we have two ground pins on either side. And the issue is that down here is the switch. And it's connected to negative 12 volts. The problem is, I've rats missed this, um, the negative 12 volt signal is on an internal layer of the PCB. Um, so typically what you would do in this case is you would cut a trace um, and you would install a resistor in between. The problem is there is no trace because the leg of the jack goes directly into this uh, this pad here, this green via. Um, and internal, inside the circuit board, there is a connection made. Um, so we can't cut the trace. Uh, can't cut a trace and just install a resistor. Instead, we have to make a modified jack, which uh, we make a modified jack, which adds that series resistor inside the jack itself. Um, so that's what we have to do. Um, so I'm going to yeah. I think that, that 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 basically sums it up. Is we're gonna insert a resistor in here. Um, and we're going to do it by modifying the jack itself. Uh, so, let's get to it. Um, I, someone sent in a repair here. So, let's open it up. OK, 
Okay, so to pull this thing apart, um, you only need a few tools. Uh, first, the screwdriver to take off the back one. I'm going to switch to this. So I have the uh, the microscope set up. It's probably not going to be very useful um, because of just how big. Uh, let's see here. The socket is. That's as far out as I can zoom, and that's. It's still way too big. So, um, we'll just use the small camera. So, I guess this is a good uh, instruction for how to pull these apart. These knobs you just pull right off. Sometimes they can be a little, um, a little stiff, hard to get off. And this is a 10 millimeter uh, hex, uh, hex driver. If you want to get one of these, it's really important if you can see here it's a very deep um, internal, and it needs to be so that it can fit over over the shaft of the part. So this section here needs to be quite deep. So yeah, I loosen those, and then I have a what is this guy? Five sixteenths of an inch um, hex driver for all the nuts. This one doesn't need to be doesn't need to be as deep, even though this one is. Um, importantly though, sometimes these drivers um, don't, they have like a ridge around the very end of the driver. Uh, and if that is the case, it is liable to add little rings onto the, onto the aluminum, aluminum panel. Um, so, and you know, that just makes things look less pretty. So here we go. This is my, my technique for getting these off as quickly as possible. Just, you just run your finger along multiples at the same time. Okay, so that's everything removed. Removing the faceplate, it's nice and simple. Okay, I'll put the artboard over here. And then I guess the last thing is uh, all the light pipes. So I'll show you how to reinstall them at the end, because uh, they are a little fiddly. And then there's some washers as well. I'll explain the purpose of the washers in a moment too. Um, okay, so that's everything. Here's the I got everything broken down. Um, here we can look at the circuit board and this jack here is the run jack. Uh, you'll see it says down here run. And so this is the one we have to modify. You can't do it without that without pulling out the old board, uh, the old jack. So we'll start with that. Um, I use these wire cutters. Um, now the best option is to start with the ones you can reach. And so basically what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to cut out the jack. So we're going to trim that one side. And then once we've got done that, you can actually just pull with quite a lot of force, uh, pull the whole thing up. And from here, um, you could use a flathead screwdriver. I have one here. Um, so now that that metal panel has been broken, I can kind of pry it up now. And now you'll see it's just the, the plastic on the side. And what we'll be able to do is now reach inside, again, with the wire cutters and trim the, uh, the top and bottom pins. So now we've trimmed three of the four pins, and we can lift the whole internal plastic piece up, and that will expose the last pin, which we can trim out like that. So now if I show you the jack, it's been kind of mutilated, um, but you'll see it's been kind of folded out, opened up. 
So that's uh, rubbish now. Okay, uh, now that we've done that, uh, we'll see here that we have these four pins open. Um, and all these four, they still have it's, uh, this one up here. It still has all the, the physical pins in it. So the next thing is we have to get them out. Um, so the best solution in my book is you can go either either direction. Um, I'm going to do it this way because we can get it on camera. So I'm going to add some leaded solder. Um, so all of the all of our circuits are made uh, Rojas compliant, which means there's no lead, uh, no leaded solder in anything. But when you're doing board repairs, doing it with uh, unleaded solder is incredibly challenging. So this is simply for the few that we have to repair, uh, we do we use leaded solder. So this trick is basically it was taught to me by uh, my old service employee Natalie. It was an amazing uh, synth tech. Um, so the idea is you add some leaded solder, you get everything nice and hot, and then while keeping the iron on the pad, you lift it up and hit it down hard against the table. You want to make it as flat as possible, so you don't want to like cause unnecessary damage to the uh, or impact to the board. It should be it should be fine. It's not going to damage it. Um, but the, the idea is that will kind of physically remove the pin from the jack. Um, you can also just get out leftover solder. Um, and this is basically a better version of a solder sucker. Um, it still won't be perfect, but we can get kind of 80% of the way there. Um, so you'll see here it kind of creates little pile of solder that we'll have to throw away after this. Um, so, to clean it up now, I use uh, solder wick. Where are we? Down here. So solder wick is, well, solder braid it's also called. Um, I use, what do I use? This, this brand, Quick Braid. We're all set. Size C, 25 feet. Easy braid. Um, this stuff's good. It is quite narrow, um, yeah, and so it, it just makes it a lot easier to work with. So we can trim, uh, the best, the good thing to do with this is you always want to trim off, if you have a lot that's been used and is already full of solder, this will just make it more effective at wicking. Don't mind my phone, I'll get to it after this. So we just place this on top and then put the iron on the back of that. Hold it on for a couple seconds. That looks fine. And then, when you need to get more out, I usually hold it down with the iron itself, um, and then pull the plastic reel backwards. It's just the uh, that way you don't have to touch the braid because it can get incredibly hot. The whole the whole concept of soldering braid is that it is brass uh, threads that are soldered together. Um, and I'm just noticing there's a little bit of extra solder down here that I need to get out. Um, yeah, so brass is an incredibly good uh, heat conductor. Yeah. Um, so the idea is the solder flows onto the brass because it prefers to, it like has maximum surface tension. Something like that. Okay, uh, so we've got it out now. Um, and if I put something light underneath, we should be able to see that. Okay, momentarily I'll look at my phone. Nice friend from there. A nice text from a friend. Okay, uh, you can't really see in this light, but basically those are totally uh, clear. The way I would do it is like hold it up to a light source and look through, and you should see the the full uh, opened up slots. Okay, uh, so now I hit. Now we got to here. 
before we do anything else, we need to clean it up. Uh, and cleaning it is very important because if you leave that residue, um, it basically can uh, degrade over time. Um, so I just have a Q-tip which has, or a cotton bud, what are you going to call it, has uh, alcohol on it. You see here it's like spreading out. Um, so you want to be, you don't want to go all over the place because this stuff can actually damage the parts if you get it too close. Um, but the idea here is we just want to get in there, and you'll see on the on the side here it's kind of kind of, it's gone kind of orange. It's a little burnt, right? But actually, it's just it's just flux residue that the flux has burnt, but it's just the flux residue that is. Uh, that is there. It's not actually the circuit board that's burnt. Okay, so we cleaned up, flip it around to the dry end, and then this should basically get us to a nice, kind of good as new looking circuit board. Yeah, looks great. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, so, when we replace this, there is one thing to keep in mind. Um, you'll see here, uh, this trace here, there's actually a little tiny scratch in it. Let me, let me zoom in a little here. I'm just uh, enjoying using the new scope, so I have to make the most of it. Right. Yeah, you'll see that, right? This little scratch. And that trace, I believe, is a power trace. And because um, the metal uh, shell of the jack is connected to ground, we don't want it to bridge to whatever is under there. Um, so I think the like traditional solution would be to, um, you know, get, uh, add some solder moss, so the green stuff on here. You can add stuff on there and then uh, use a UV light to set it. And it's in there. So I'm just, oh yeah, I think it's just some plastic. Um, it is, it's totally good to use that. Um, the issue is I don't have a UV lamp to do it and I, I do have the solder mask, but I have to put it in the sun and the sun is now setting. Um, so the other solution is we're going to modify the jack. Um, and so what that means is because the jack goes in this way, uh, with the angle like that, it's this piece down here that might potentially um, touch that exposed copper. So what we're going to do is just trim that back a little bit. So we have it here. I'm just going to take the bottom section off. I'm trying to do this in front of the microscope and it's a little challenging. Okay, I'll just hold it. Hmm. There we go. Alright, so yeah, you'll see it's it's actually much sharper, but it's short enough that it won't actually touch the circuit board, so we should be fine. Okay, that's step one. Um, so I guess, yeah, now we're on to modifying the run jack. So what we need, yeah, we need one of these jacks. Um, I don't know what the actual part number is, but it's kind of a... It's one of two very common jacks uh, used in... Your um, modules, so it looks like this. Yeah, the, the the shell is connected to these two, the two pins on the side. Um, this this uh, connector is the tip, and this one is the switch. So what we're going to do is we have to add a resistor in series with this switch pin. Um, so in order for that to work, we can't let the existing one pass through the um, through the circuit board. So we have to trim it. So trim that there, and you'll see from this angle, I've cut it as, as close down to the body as I possibly can, right? So, it's okay if there's a tiny bit of overhang, because it's not going to be flush with the circuit board, but that's the, you want to take it all the way back. Next, I have this resistor. It is a, uh, I think anything from 6.8 to 8.2 works well. This is, a, uh, I think this is 6.8k. Um, yeah, kilo, kilo ohms. Uh, 
uh, that'll get us into the right range in terms of um, current reduction. So for this set, you want a pair of needle nose pliers, and we're going to make a fancy pattern in the in the legs. So we grab it about here, and we're going to kind of push and pull it into this shape. Um, it's a little bit of a, a curious action with the with the pliers themselves. Um, Again, yeah. so you can you can kind of use use your fingers as much as you want. These devices are not static sensitive; they're not like uh, microcontrollers. Um, so yeah, you'll see that kind of shape. And so the idea here is we want the resistor in this dimension and the legs in line in that dimension, right? So we have like an x, y. Um, okay, and, and from there, we're going to trim one leg to about this long. Um, how long is that, you ask? Here is a ruler for measurement for relative size. So yeah, seven millimeters. Three eighths. I don't know. Fractions are hard. Hold on. There's a tiny spider. Um, okay. So now the the kind of more challenging part is we have to solder this resistor onto the jack and inside on the switch. So this one's going to be hard to capture, but we'll do our best. I find this is easiest to do with some kind of tool like hold the jack in place. I think it actually goes better the other way. So here I, I've found that these needle nose pliers are quite good. Kind of like squeezing it in the grips a little bit. And the idea is I want to get solder onto this internal surface. So this this surface where we cut the nut the little knob off is the switch. Um, so we want to get some solder down here. So we're gonna start with that. So that's good. Just a small, a small amount. It doesn't have to be a lot. Um, and now if we look at our jack, our resistor, sorry, we're going to take, you know, every time I do this, I realize it doesn't actually need to be an S. It could just be the, the pin on this side could actually just be straight out here. But we will persevere as is. Um, so one thing I like to do is add a tiny bit of solder onto the end of the resistor. And what that'll do is basically use the surface tension of the solder to make those two, uh, these two connections want to come together. So you'll see here, I've kind of bent the resistor leg to make it easier to hold. And this is the hard part where it's going to be hard to see for everyone. You need to get the resistor as close in to the jack as you can. Not inside and not out here, because it needs to basically become the new leg of the jack. So I think around about here is what we want. And so we go in there with Okay. Something like that. That's honestly the hardest part of this whole process. And it's something and it's just doing that is so hard that I've kind of had everybody send them in for years. But, you know, there's people out there with you have the skills. If you have the skills, you can do this. So, um what I'm doing now is just inspecting it. So, importantly, you know, we're in here. Uh we need to make sure this side is not going to touch the the switch. 
but it also is nice and close. And you want to make sure there's no like leg kind of up inside the jack, right, in here, because that'll make a problem. But you can see here it's like it's all the way down in this corner. So it's not going to get in the way of the physical jack. It's not going to get touched. It looks perfect. Yeah, OK. And then finally, you'll note here that it is pretty much in line with this pin here. So that, that's why we did that bend, is so we can have this leg coming straight up. But that's it. OK, um, I'm going to trim the extended part off of here. So now this is our like modified run jack. Um, looks like that. Cool. Okay, so let's get it installed. So we're back to here. Um, obviously, you need to thread through the um, the run pin first. Sorry, I can't get it on the camera on the mic on the microscope. Okay, it's out of focus. I'm sorry. Um, Now, it's going to be hard to show, but the jack is slightly elevated relative to the ones around it. That's kind of a, um, it always happens that way. And also what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing this resistor leg and I'm giving it a gentle pull through the circuit board. And that, um, the purpose of that is to make sure that the resistor hasn't folded up under the jack. It should just kind of stay right where it is when you pull it. Okay, uh, so now we can solder it. Right, so I'm going to start with the resistor leg. Right. You just want to be quick with this because you don't want to have too much heat go down into the jack. Um, then I do the tip. Um, and then I'll do a little, little bit of solder on the, on the shield. Actually, let's just go the whole way. You can test it before you solder these side pins in. Um, but I feel like if you make a mistake, you kind of have to start over, unfortunately. So those are all, they're all done up. Um, and now we can uh, trim that off. Yeah, and you'll see here, um, it looks pretty much like normal. So you'll see, yeah, from that angle, there's lots of uh, flux residue around, but we'll clean that up in a second. Uh, what I want to do right now is use a multimeter. This is optional. Um, this is just to check your work. So uh, go, we're going to use resistance mode. Let me see if I can get this in here. Yes. Sorry, it's upside down. Um, uh, and what I'm going to measure is from the switch to the tip. And what we're looking for is that resistance. Right? In this case, 6.8. Well, it's measuring 6.6 .6 kilo ohms, but it's roughly 6.8. Okay, um, and then you can just be sure you want to check against ground, to make sure it's like non zero, so there's no bridge to ground certainly won't be if we've already done this. Okay, so that looks good. And then the next question is to make sure that the switch actually works. So to do that, I'm just going to attach a uh, jack in. So what this should do is actually separate these two pins, and we should no longer be getting 6.8k. Zero ohms. I'm trying to figure out if that's correct or not. <laughs> oh, I'm measuring the wrong connection. That's why. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, look at that. 200k climbing. So that's just other parts of the circuit interacting. Um, all right. So I'm going to say that looks successful. So the next thing to do is to test it. Um, I can do that on the scope. Let's do that on the 
picoscope. Okay, so um, let me pull this over here. I had a technique. Oh yes, nice. <laughs> okay, so this is just my kind of test era rat case. First thing is we turn it on. We get lights, that's a good thing. So now we should be able to view it on the scope. I'm just putting it on the scope because it's kind of interesting to look at. Alright, so... Alright, so this is running... Oh, this is actually running the very first original firmware. So, uh, we have this going. The easiest way to test the run jack, we're just going to plug it in. And what should happen here? Oh yeah, so this is the original, original mode called spill. Would do some interesting things with uh, pitch divisions and stuff. So that looks like it's working correctly. Um, and then we'll just plug in a, um, a voltage offset to make sure that Jack is still responding to voltage. So what's happening here is uh, it's changing, I think, the, the cutoff point where it allows it to kind of latch on. And that seems to be working correctly. Here's all six at once. Good news is, that means everything is working. Okay, uh, yeah, you know, whenever I'm doing a repair, I always like to at least have a, a brief little moment to play with it. You know, kind of make sure that you're not just tricking yourself into thinking that it's finished. Um, okay, uh, but yeah, everything looks good. So let's clean up the back of this jack. So I'm just gonna use another Q-tip. Yeah, this is a 91% isopropyl alcohol. You could use, I think you can still use like 70. Uh, you could use 99. I, the reason 99 is sometimes a little challenging is it's evaporates so quickly. And sometimes I want this to stay a little bit more wet. Um, and the 91, I think is a good balance where, you know, there's not much water, so you're less likely to encourage corrosion. But I think it's mostly just about how quickly it dries. And I think 99 dries a little too quickly. So, here we are. And like, you can always use the dry end of the Q-tip to uh, tidy it up. Yeah, looks pretty good. There's a little bit extra on the inside of here. All right, I'm gonna say that's done. Uh, let's throw it back together. And we'll do one more final test. So you'll probably notice, I mean, this is taking a little bit longer than normal because it's a, because uh, I'm trying to talk through it as well as just do it. Um, but 
taking apart and putting the modules back together is very much one of the most time-consuming parts of doing the repairs. Uh, so, uh, yeah, right now I'm just putting the washers back on. And so on these older modules that use the kind of jack that we just replaced, um, the parts are ever so, they're like a millimeter-ish um, shorter than the jacks in terms of the faceplate. And so if you don't have anything to kind of balance these out with these washers, um, it can cause the, the faceplate to be bent um, as it all gets tightened together. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you one other tip as we reassemble. So the next thing is getting these light pipes in. So on these original ones, you basically have to get the pipe into a, into a hole on the circuit board. The LEDs are actually mounted, they're soldered on the back of the PCB, and there's just holes in the circuit board. So what you're doing right here is actually pushing the lens down to touch the LED. You don't want to push too hard because you can pop the LED off the back, but just get it lined up and it should kind of press into the hole. Um, I've never actually broken an LED off, so I don't know how easy that is to do. Um, but they're all on now, you can see them. The challenge is they all move, right? And so the next step is the faceplate. And as I put this on, you'll see here that some LEDs are aligned and some aren't. And so I can't actually push the faceplate down because the LEDs are in the way. This is, this is actually the main reason we changed how the LEDs are assembled. <laughs> uh, so. The first one is use a something like these tweezers. They're I think I think they're just molded, but they're plastic. They're not metal. If you use metal, you'll scratch the lenses. Um, but here we can kind of put them through the hole and just line it up. That's what we're trying to do. And you have to go kind of step by step. There will be a little bit of resistance if it's if it has already been pushed. Um, but yeah, you'll see they're starting to go in. Um, and you can kind of work your way along along the module. It's easier when you're not trying to put it on camera. Alright, we get that there. Right, and you, kind of, you might have heard that, but it kind of clicks down. And if I can show in profile, you'll see they're basically flush with the top of the panel now. Um, so from here, it's just a matter of uh, oh. You want to be careful that you get this, you get this right because I just tried to put the rest of it together and all the lights came out again. So you want to hold that down nice and tight, and then move the rest of the panel so that it sits down snug. Uh, you might have to kind of pull, push or pull the pop shafts a little bit to make it all fit, but it'll get there. Okay, uh, now let me do all the nuts again. Right. I don't worry about tightening the. Um, yeah, I don't worry about tightening the nuts on the pots at first. Um, because they're kind of greasy, and they, they hold their position by themselves. Um, but yeah, basically you just want to get all these started without disturbing the faceplate too much. Uh, it's kind of locked in there now, but the last thing you want is to be halfway through, and then, you know, the LEDs all come loose. So that's why I start with uh, the intone, it's in the center, um, and then the two outside trigger uh, trigger points. The best thing about doing these videos, is that, you know, I'm, I'm describing it to you, but I do this for myself anyway. <laughs> this is how I work. Uh, it can be a little strange to work in the same room as me if you're not used to that. 
Oh, here's another another trick. Once your fingers get dirty enough from the grease, you can just pick them up, pick up the uh, hex nuts by just pressing down hard onto them. Yeah, there's lots of uh, little things like this that become second nature when you do it a few, well, a few tens of thousands of times. Is watching this in order to learn uh, that you're fast forwarding all this kind of busy work. Nice. Um, okay, so now tightening these, these old jacks, you don't want to over tighten them because you can actually pull the whole thread out of the out of the jack, um, which obviously you don't want. So. Yeah, just be a little careful. Don't go over tighten, but you need to have them tight enough that they don't come loose. So find the balance. I've never had a uh, a torque wrench to decide what the actual number is. Um, but then again, if you don't have a torque wrench, it's not going to help you. Okay, so um, I've just used my finger to tighten these. So. When you have those washers on, you can tighten the two. Uh, you can tighten the time and intone all the way. But then, with the other ones, you can see my hand here. I'm like, I'm like barely tightening these. Yeah. They're real. They don't have to be tight at all. It doesn't change how the knob feels. Uh, and the issue is, if you over tighten these, it'll actually bend the face plate and potentially the PCB, which can cause stress fractures um, in the PCB, which can result in components cracking or in the PCB traces themselves cracking. So don't tighten these down all the way. Um, it will cause issues and it will not make things any better in any way. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, finally, we gotta do the knobs. This. So the, with the knob, uh, they have a little, they have the D shaft inside. But actually, oh, you don't even need to know that. Oh yeah. The so the idea is the this knob, the flat is on the right, which means the arrow should point to the left. It'll only go on one way, um, but just in terms of finding finding that location, that's how you're going to do it. Okay, and then we just have to attach the um, the artboard back. Screwdriver. So here, let's get that lined up. And before you tighten down that side, make sure this side's lined up well. This one I can move a little bit. So line that up there. Tighten this side nice and tight, and then come back and re-tighten that side. And that is a, that is the complete Just Friends Run Jack update. Except, I almost forgot, the most important part. Wait one second. <laughs> Our little high heel shoes. Um, so the idea here was, you know, we wanted once the module is updated, it's very important that you communicate that it has been updated, so that things don't get sent in or people don't receive them and think that there is an issue still. Um, 
So, I printed out a giant sheet of these um, high heel tabs, and I've kind of pre scored them, but uh, from here, you're not going to be able to see this properly, but you just take this. So it's a high heel, it's terribly crooked, I'm sorry. Um, it's a high heel because what better shoe to run in than a high heel? And that's the run jack. I'm sorry, that's that's the level of joke that I'm that I'm willing to, to say at this time of day. Um, okay, um, that's that. I'm gonna quickly plug it back in. Make sure it still works. It's very important when you reassemble it that you uh, run it again just to make sure. And you know, all the lights came on, we should be good. Looks good to me. Okay, uh, I will throw this back into a box and uh, get this back to the customer. So yeah, that's the uh, that and that is how you do the run jack upgrade. Uh, thanks for hanging out. If anybody was hanging out, probably not. Um, I will be posting this online. Have a good night.